The Common Ground World competition happening on August 13, 2024 will feature the Sushi Boat Meta. The craft requirements for Sushi Boats are 1 Ebimaki, 1 Salmon Nigiri, 1 Eel Nigiri, and 1 Wasabi. It is crafted in the Sushi Restaurant with a craft time of 60 seconds and stored in the storehouse. For this competition, the Sushi Boat will get 50,000 stars for each one sold. Ebimaki is a new craft requiring 2 shrimp, 2 seaweed, 1 white rice, and 1 wasabi to craft. It is also made in the sushi restaurant with the craft time of 40 seconds and stored in the storehouse. The trade time for this competition is 100 seconds with one gasoline cost per trade. The starting layout provided for this competition is a plains biome facing north. You start with two seaweed farmers, two aquaculturists, several seaweed farms, two shrimp farms, silo, a seafood warehouse, two water pumps, and two paved roads. You have everything provided to immediately craft shrimp and sell that for some nice cash at the start. It will be difficult to scale up shrimp production this this way but it can be a decent way to get all the cash you need if you manage to scale it up. I still recommend doing gold rush since it will be easier to scale up and you will need so much cash to finish a competitive design. Sushi boat is a very expensive design to build due to the fact that you need energy for the wild net fishing and fishing platforms but these are negatively impacted by dirty which is casted by power plants. So the best way to provide clean energy to them is by using passive energy from nuclear power. The cash boosts for this competition are shrimp from 1,800 to 4,200 and the ebimaki from 6,850 to 15,000. The rewards for this competition are the standard gala rewards for reaching the top 1,200 placements in the leaderboard by the time the competition ends. Rewards are usually distributed directly to your account within 5 days. And now I will showcase a competitive sushi boat design that I have created for this competition and it does not utilize any NFTs to impact the production rates. This design is is doing 104 sushi boats per hour. It's been running for about four hours, so it looks like this should be a stable production rate. I'm going to scroll through the production monitor so you can see the production rates of everything. And I'm going to talk about the most relevant items to the sushi boat production. So the first one is Ebi Maki. This is making 110 of those per hour, which I might be mispronouncing, but that's just the way I pronounce it. So bear with me on that one. It is making 104 eel nigiri per hour. It's making 106 salmon nigiri per hour and 327 wasabi per hour, which is relevant because there's multiple items here that require wasabi. And the same thing with seaweed it is making 2200 seaweed per hour and seaweed is what's actually stopping it from going for a higher production rate so i'll explain what adjustments can be made to further improve this build after i finish going over the entire crafting process and how many buildings are involved i'll begin by explaining seaweed and shrimp production i have 12 seaweed farmers which are in charge of picking up seaweed from the nine seaweed farms that i'm using all of these seaweed farms have a green craft timer that means they craft at the fastest craft time of five seconds and that's because they have the three passive salty that they need from being right next to the ocean seaweed is then stored in a silo of which i have three of them and seaweed is used in four different crafts it's used to craft shrimp from the shrimp farms fish chum in the mixing tents ebimaki in the sushi restaurants and it's also used to craft roe in the fish farm i have 12 aquaculturists house which those those aquaculturists are in charge of taking seaweed to the shrimp farms and fish farms to craft shrimp or roe and they are also responsible for crafting eel. I have 11 shrimp farms, shrimp being stored in the seafood warehouse and I have three seafood warehouses one on the west side over here and two are on the east side seafood warehouses require ice blocks to build if you don't know how to craft ice blocks I have a video in the link in the description on how to craft ice blocks and how the cold proximity effect works now I'm going to explain multiple crafts mainly white rice fish chum food mix eel and salmon so I have seven tractors which are in charge of picking up husk rice 
from the rice fields as well as crafting the worms as well as picking up wasabi but i have 14 rice fields all of them have the eight passive water that they need to grow husk rice remember that you need 10 water to actually build these rice fields so you may need a well in order to get the remaining amount of water to finish building your rice fields the husk rice is stored in the silo as well and then i have a total of 20 mixing tents i have 10 of them making white rice all of these have the one passive energy that they need from a nearby nuclear power i have six mixing tents making fish chum and i have four mixing tents making food mix i have two worm farms which are required in order to make the food mix the worms are stored in the storehouse of which i have four storehouses three are over here on the east side and one is on the west side i have nine fish farms four are crafting row which is also required for the food mix which then gets used to craft eel and five other fish farms I have four fishermen houses which are in charge of picking up fish chum and taking it to the wild net fishing or fishing platforms which I'm not using for this build I'm just using wild net fishing and then they can use it to craft salmon so wild net fishing requires one fish chum and three energy and the fishing platform requires two fish chum and six energy but it crafts salmon significantly faster so preferably you do want passive energy for these and that is why I am using three nuclear power to provide all the energy for my six 16 wild net fishing that I am using and also the wild net fishing needs to be touching a waterway such as an ocean or a river and if you're using fishing platforms they need to be touching an open world edge and now I'll explain wasabi and all of the relevant sushi rolls and sushi boats so I have seven wasabi farms these are of course crafting wasabi one is on a yellow crop timer because it's not being impacted by enough shade so yes that's correct these are on a green craft timer because they are positively impacted by shade. So if you don't have at least three shade on them, then you will not craft wasabi fast enough or at least at the fastest craft timer using these. So you do want these wasabi farms close to buildings that are casting shade. They don't care about dirty or salty. Wasabi is used in three different crafts. Those are ebimaki, il nigiri, and sushi boats. I have a total of 16 sushi restaurants. Three are crafting salmon nigiri, three are crafting eel nigiri, six are crafting ebimaki because they take a little longer to craft and also I have them farther away than I would like to have them. This isn't the most optimal placement for the sushi restaurants crafting ebimaki and that's because they have to make two trips to the silo that has the most seaweed and then two trips to the seafood warehouse that holds the most amount of shrimp and that's quite a long distance. They basically have to walk across the map to pick those up and then these four sushi restaurants are the ones that are crafting sushi boats i'm using the standard gasoline setup with two water pumps two power plants a refinery in between them crafting gasoline and a refinery to the side crafting petroleum we don't have an oil seep that provides us passive crude oil so i do have to use four oil pumps to craft crude oil and i do need one forklift to pick up that crude oil and i do have a fuel storage for all of the crude oil petroleum and gasoline for the trade setup I'm using two trade depot and optional buildings are one builder house one logger you don't actually need any wood at the end of this build but of course you will need wood and oak wood to build most of these buildings so up until the end you don't need your logger or your lumberjacks anymore so you could get rid of this in the end same goes for the lumber mill this is just to craft lumber but in the end you don't actually need any lumber so you could also replace that and i do have one empty spot over here this was intended to be used for the tree farm or the oak tree farm like i said at the end you don't need to craft that so you could use this for something else you could also build another rice field here but this is 
is actually overproducing husk rice and white rice, so you don't need to do that. Here's what the auto sell looks like. I have all the items at a sell quantity of 12, with the exception of sushi boats, I have that at a sell quantity of 10. Here's what the build looks like on the visualizer. Total cost is 48.4 million, but this does not include the cost of building the ice block setup as well as the steel mill and the mines required to craft steel to craft the nuclear power. So if you include that, you're adding around up to an additional 11 million. It really depends on how you do your ice block setup. And that makes the total build cost come out to at least 59 million. And you probably want to add another million to that for the wages because these buildings have a lot of wages. So the wage cost once this build is done is 48,210 per minute, but you will have no issue with the wages once you're selling all those sushi boats. This file contains three stages. The first stage is what the starting biome looks like. The second stage is intended to show you what it would look like right before you finish. Notice how I have a warehouse intended to store energy so you can finish your other buildings. You can craft energy from any of the nuclear power. I have a lumber yard so you can store wood or oak wood to finish building anything you need. Of course, the tree is over here. And I have a well here so you can collect water to to finish building anything else that you need to finish, such as your shrimp farms or your rice fields. So this warehouse, lumber yard, and well can easily be replaced with the wasabi farm in the end. And you would also replace this paved road right here with a wasabi farm as well, or use it temporarily to have another building, like another builder, for example. And of course, this is what the final design looks like. I just made one adjustment here and added the wasabi farm that was missing right there. But once you download this file if you choose to download it it will reflect this right here you can find the file for this on my discord server and then an invite link is in the description of the video now before i end this build showcase i have one final suggestion that could improve the sushi boat rate of this up to 110 per hour and that is to add two more seaweed farmers that way you have more seaweed being collected and then more seaweed being used for all the crafts that require it i believe seaweed is with stopping this build from potentially crafting a bit more of fish chum to make more salmon nigiri or a bit more roe to make more eel to make more eel nigiri and therefore allow you to reach a higher sushi boat rate. Now I would replace both the logger and the lumber mill at the very end with two more seaweed farmers. This is going to be kind of tricky to accomplish, but basically you would want to have your lumber yard here or here. Already have the wood or oak wood that you need, and you'd still want your warehouse here with the energy. And of course you have this builder, but you could also have builders over here because it already has four water. I don't suggest having builders over here otherwise you're gonna need that well to supply one more water in order to build the wasabi farm since the wasabi farm requires four water to build but only three water to craft wasabi but you get the idea basically put what you need in order to make two more seaweed farmer houses at the very end and that should improve your seaweed production rate a little bit more and therefore improve everything now you could also make some adjustments to how you have the rice field set up so like i mentioned i am overproducing husk rice which means i'm also overproducing white rice i have 370 white rice per hour being produced for 110 sushi belts you really only need 330 white rice so you could get rid of some of these rice fields which means you could move this around potentially have one more building here there's just an idea on how you could have another spot saved right there if you wish to do so if you do have an express depot of course you can use that instead of utilizing two trade depot and you'll have no issues selling everything that you need to sell that will save you one spot but you can't really do much with it other than have another builder house or an nft that provides passive crude oil it's gonna be everything for the build showcase so i hope you found this helpful or informative please leave a like on the video leave a comment if you have any feedback consider subscribing if you haven't done so if you want to help support the channel i have links in the description on how to do so as always i appreciate your support and thank you for watching